Inflation versus deflation, this is how the rich continue to get richer and the wealth divide continues to grow further and further apart is based off of understanding inflation versus deflation. Let's get into this video. Hopefully it helps you. If it does help you, please do hit the like button. It really does help get these videos out there. Would really appreciate if you take a moment to hit that like button. And if you wanna follow me on other social medias, my information will be down in the description down below for Instagram and Twitter and all of that. Um, always like getting the dms and stuff and being able to talk with you all over there but let's get into the video inflation is when the cost of goods and services goes up deflation And I'm also gonna break this down into a very um, simple form that I kind of try to modernize it so the average working class out there can understand this and how it affects their day-to-day -day life. So we're just gonna go over the broad definition first and then start getting into detail on how this affects you in a real way. So inflation is when the cost of goods and services goes up. So your oil, your gas is costing a lot more money. I've noticed when I go to the pump, it's starting to cost a lot more money because they have inflated and diluted the dollar supply. What is deflation? Deflation is when the costs of goods, services goes down. And this could be due to a technological, a tech improvement. It could be due to people actually being uh, fair with their money and backing it to real assets. That could be another way to do it. Uh, but let's go over tech improvements. What kind of tech improvement could make deflation? Well, one of the biggest improvements is the internet right now has been massively deflationary on the education system. So the education system is deflationary. The cost of education is going down if you're smart <laughs> okay so well let's put that little part in there because if you want to go to these online classes and you want to do uh you want to learn on youtube I, i'm all self-taught like how i'm shooting this video everything i've done is all self-taught because there's tons of videos out there just like this one on youtube that can teach you how to do whatever it is that you want to do quite frankly that's why i would much rather have um 24 7 of my time and just spend it on the internet learning what i want to learn so education is deflationary if you're smart about it. Um, tech improvements make things that are deflationary. Say a car goes, you know, it used to go 80 mi 80,000 miles. Now a car might go a half a million miles because of the tech improvement. That's a deflationary thing. Now that car might be expensive, but it's kind of deflationary because it lasts a lot longer. That's examples of a deflationary world. Um, want to go over that real quick. And inflation, is basically when our gas costs more money, our food costs more money, everything costs more money. Now, I wanna go into a real world scenario here on why inflation is basically stealing from you. And here, I'll go to the inflation side over here. So, one of the, the figures that we're told to look at is the CPI figures, right? So the consumer price index. And what's crazy about this figure, and I've talked about it a lot on this channel and how it wasn't going to be transitory like we were told, uh, the figure came in at just 1.4% in January. Right? It was at 1.4% in January, uh, beginning of this year. Now, not even a year later, we're told that the inflation rate has changed to 6 point two percent and let's keep in mind that the cpi is something that is wildly askewed on the data it's only telling us basically what they want to show us they do this all behind closed doors and most leading economists out there say that figure is a lot higher than 6.2 percent inflation now what does that mean your dollar is losing 6.2% of its buying power year over year. And this figure, by the way, since I don't personally believe it's transitory, compounds year over year. That's another thing people don't take into consideration. That figure compounds. And so if you have your money sitting in a bank, 
The bank's job is to keep your ice cube frozen. And in this example, your ice cube is melting away if you keep it in a bank. And what is our money? Money should be considered, you know, time, stored time. In a deflationary world, you want your time value to go up. So if I worked hard now, I worked hard now and I made a wage now, well, I want to store that money in a place where my time is stored and it's going up in value. And that's a deflationary world. If you put your money in a deflationary place, and there's only a few places to choose in a deflationary world. Um, so how is money time? That's something I should go over real quick. Money is time because if you're on a salary, you're giving up roughly 50, 60 hours a week, right? So you're giving up 240 hours a month for this salary that you get paid every month. So say your wage, let's do an example here. Let's say, put a line, let's say Jim makes 4,000 a month. So what does this mean? Well, Jim is willing to give up 240 hours of his time for 4,000 a month. It's quite a bit of time. And so once you realize that this number is going up based off of a government overprinting the monetary supply and messing and tinkering around with, with things, with quantitative easing and all of that, when you realize that you gave up 240 hours per month to make $4,000, you're not getting paid in gold and silver. You're not getting paid in Bitcoin. You're getting paid in USD. That is going up, inflation is going up on it. So it's being wildly diluted. Do you think that wages are going up because of this? Rarely. I think as a whole, wages might actually be deflationary. And another thing that this doesn't take into consideration is that Jim had to pay the W-2 money right off the top. When you get paid a salary, now, and I remember this from being a waiter, really, he might be taking home 2,900. Because taxes got taken right off the top. He loses 1,100 right off the top of the check. So he might only be taking home 2,900. Now, do you think Jim's boss is going to Jim and saying, hey, you know, inflation's probably up at 10%, maybe 15, 20%. I'm going to pay you now 5,000 a month to, to compensate for that. No, that's not what's going to happen. What's really going to happen here is Jim has a landlord and his landlord understands deflation. And so the landlord, let's call her Jenny. Jenny's real smart and she is the landlord. She understands inflation versus deflation. And she put her money that she, when she worked the job, she put it into real estate. And so Jenny has a house, has a few of them, actually. Say she has a few rental properties here. And Jim happens to stay in one of them. Now, Jenny charges Jim 2000 a month. Goes to Jenny. Now, when that money goes into, into Jenny's account, and she probably set up separate LLC. She probably did this really right. We can go to detail in a future video on how to do this the right way because I'm learning how to do this right now. That money doesn't get taken away right off the top. She doesn't lose the 1100 right off the top over here. And this could be 800, it could be 1100. It depends on different scenarios there, your state, all that stuff right there. But this, what I'm getting into is that money gets taken off the top when you're on salary. This money doesn't get taken off the top. And then what Jenny will do is she'll reinvest that money back into the properties and continue to expand because she gets to use that cash flow and not get any money taken off the top. Meanwhile, Jim gave up 2000 here and now is only left with $900 to pay for gas, to pay for groceries, to pay for all the different expenses out there that are going up in price. That's supposed to be transitory. So how is this world really scary? Well, because the wages are probably deflationary. 
What's a scary world to live in? A scary world to live in is when wages are deflationary, which means wages are the same. He's making the same four grand a month, or he might be unemployed and be down to 3,000 a month. He might be down to 2,800 a month in non-unemployment. We don't know what's happened to the working class right now. I would argue it's stagnant or deflationary on wages. So what's a scary scenario? Stagnant or deflationary wages, which means they're the same or going down. In this scenario, it's 4,000 or down to 3,800 or down to 2,800 going down due to deflation on the wages, but paid in an inflationary diluted currency. That's a scary world and that's the world that I personally believe, just my opinion, that we're living in right now. So what do we do? We put ourselves in a position to get into real estate. That's what in this scenario. So there's real estate is deflationary. That's a deflationary place to be because they're not making more land. If you have a house on land, they're not making more of it. You can't just inflate and dilute away your land. Now there's other scenarios there that people can go over, but at the, uh, just based on the, the premise, you can't take away, the land is the land. And so some people think that they could take away the land, there's all different things, but at the end of the day, there's only so much land available. If you have real estate, you own the real estate, that's deflationary. Um, you know, Bitcoin, gold and silver. And then another thing is when we talk about tech improvements being deflationary, and so tech improvements, that's the internet, has been deflationary. Look at our supercomputers in our pocket for a grand. That used to be a million back in the day, you know, to have something like that. That's a deflationary situation. The iPhone is wildly deflationary and affected us on many fronts in education, uh, the photos, all these different things that the iPhone can do. Um, massively deflationary on society. So it's something to think about. What is deflationary and what is inflationary? Actually, put that in a comment below. What do you think is the best deflationary place to be and what part of society is the most deflationary? I would argue that education is the most deflationary right now, but what other places do you see being deflationary after you understand what deflation is? Throw that in a comment down below. I would love to read that. And also, what are you doing to protect yourself from inflation right now? Because the banks aren't paying us 6.2% to keep our ice cube frozen. The bonds can't pay us 6.2% to keep our ice cube frozen, our ice cube being the dollar. So if we're good and we save our money, there are only so many places on where to protect the money. And none of these are a guarantee. This isn't any, none of this here, there are no guarantees here. But what is a guarantee is that the dollar will in fact lose its buying power. That is a guarantee. Scary thought because the dollar has lost 99% of its buying power since the inception of the Fed um, and continues to lose more and more of its buying power. So how do we protect ourselves? At the end of the day, we have to find places that are deflationary. And a lot of people will argue that deflation is a scary thing. I don't think so. I think a deflationary world could be beautiful. Um, what do you think? Throw it in a comment down below because some people, they, they believe in this Keynesian theory of economics where we're supposed to have an inflation rate, but at the end of the day, with inflation and the way the bonds are now and everything, there isn't ways to protect our ice cube from not melting away. The stock market is so wildly overvalued right now that are we going to put our money in the S&P? Are we going to put it in the Dow? Like, what are we going to do to keep our ice cube frozen, frozen to beat this ridiculous inflation rate going up and up and up? And oh yeah, by the way, Jim's rental is probably going to go up by 10% next year, five to 10% next year. So he's probably going to be paying 21 to 2200 next year and the year after that and the year after that. So is Jenny in a bad position? No, she can change her prices and she might actually own a business. She probably does. And so she can change the prices because she owns the business. On the other hand, if you're making a wage, if you're part of the working class and your wage isn't changing, you notice your wage is the same or not going up you're making the same, you're giving up the same amount of your time and getting paid less money. You're getting paid less for your time that you're giving up if it's the same, which is completely backwards. It's totally scary. And that's why I went so big on Bitcoin. I went so big in silver and went so big in platinum, palladium, because there isn't places to store your money in a, that is deflationary other than those choices. There's only so many out there. And so again, what are you doing to protect yourself from deflation? For from inflation, right? what deflationary places are you putting your money? How are you finding ways to keep your ice cube frozen? Again, people say deflation is scary. What's really scary, in my opinion, 
is working a deflationary wage that's paid in an inflationary currency. That's a scary scenario. Let me know what you think in a comment below. I know I've said it like five times, but I really do love to read the comments. If you found some value in this video, I'd really appreciate you smashing the like button. If you want to check out my other social medias, those will all be in the description down below. See you at the next video. Signing out.